Hi, Anson Garcia here, and I'm going to give you a quick talk and demo on the iOS 10 phone app API integration with Spark or Cisco Spark. So real quick, Cisco Spark provides voice and video capabilities uh, on iOS 10, connects up to the APIs that they expose in iOS 10, and Cisco and um, Apple work very closely on this. For users, the experience is just like using the native calling capabilities in the iPhone. That's the really cool part about it. You can tap a contact in the address book, which I'll show you in a minute, or favorites or recents, and instantly make a call without having to launch a Spark app. You can also answer calls right from the lock screen, which is great. Um, you can use connected headsets, take advantage of call waiting to switch between calls, uh, whether they're on VoIP or cellular. In fact, you don't even have to need the ha to have that uh, to have the app launch. Excuse me, um, which is really really cool, and I kind of stumbled upon that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me give you the lay of the land here. This iPhone you see on your right hand side is Jack Sparrow's iPhone. Okay, Jack Sparrow also has a desktop. You can see he has a Windows desktop here. Just so happen uh, happens he has the Spark client. Uh, on it as well. And then we have Elizabeth Swan back here. She has a Windows 7 PC and she has the Cisco Spark client as well. Okay, so we're really gonna deal with Jack here. Jack's gonna make a call or extend the call out to Elizabeth Swan. So what do we do when we call somebody? Typically from our iPhone, we go to the phone app uh, and search for somebody. So let me search for Elizabeth Swan, and I can see there she is right here. And you can see if I click on that, you can see right here in the middle, you see those kind of that API was exposed, and what happened was that iPhone app went out and connected to that API, that Spark API, and then turned that call and, and FaceTime into Spark and Spark Video. All right? So we can extend that Spark video call, you know, so I can push this right here and we can make that call. There goes that call. It's going to extend out um, and I'll just go ahead and hang that up. We won't make the call right now. Okay, and then let's go back. I want to show you something, something else. So that was easy, okay? I think there's other videos and things that show you that on YouTube. Again, we go to the phone, we search for, oh, one thing I wanted to mention is that Elizabeth Swan doesn't exist in this iPhone's contacts. So the only place that Elizabeth Swan at vdbdemo.net actually exists was in the Spark app. So that's how the, the, the iOS, the iPhone app, phone app uh, found it. It kind of reached out to Spark and found, it, found this, um, uh, this contact in there and kind of pulled it into the phone app so we could uh, extend a Spark call. Okay, again, we, we hit the Spark video call that's going to go through. That goes through, and we can see um, we made a call to Elizabeth Swan over there. We'll hang that up. Um, the other thing, the really neat thing I wanted to show you, so kind of know how that happens. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that Spark app. Okay, again... There is no Spark app running. Okay, let's just close the phone app as well. So we have nothing running on this iPhone. It's just like it booted up. Again, the Spark app is not running. I'm going to go to the phone app. I'm going to search for Elizabeth Swan again. There she is. And guess what? That Spark API is still exposed. The iPhone app then uses its API to go out and fetch that uh, particular uh, Spark client video address, uh, audio and video address, which is a URI, and uh, gives me the ability to call from here. So again, Spark is not even launched. So that's kind of neat, I think. I thought that was um, quite powerful because I don't have to worry about launching Spark every time I reboot my iPhone or something like that. Um, so I can extend that call again. It launches the cross launches the Spark app because it knows what I want to do, and there goes that call uh, over there. So um, 
hopefully that has been informative uh, to you on how this works and how that API allows you to um, inside the iPhone app or the I should say the iPhone phone app to make calls to um, uh, other Spark users whether the Cisco Spark app is either launched or not launched all right so one more thing I'm going to show you is if I would lock this screen here let me do that and let's pull that over there and uh, I haven't tried this prior, but let's let's see if it works. Let's go to Jack, and then oh, we're going to go over here to Jack. Excuse me, we're going to Liz, and Liz is going to call Jack. Okay, let's see that. Um, uh, <laughs> What I wanted you to see is I'm going to hang that that that, uh, that call up there. Well, I'll go ahead and push a Spark button there so you can see what happens there. Okay, it launches Spark. But you can see what happened. What I wanted to show you there is I was in a lock screen, and uh, I extended that call out from a desktop client. Could be any client. It's going to have Spark, you know, the web browser client or the desktop client or another Spark um uh, app on an iPhone or whatever. But what I wanted you to see is even from a lock screen, that phone call came in. I was able to answer that phone call and then I could go right into uh, and cross launch into, if I put my password into the Spark application on my iPhone. Hopefully this has been informative to you and thank you for watching.